Good morning, Keto family. How are y'all doing today? Um, look, I wanted to do a series that covered um, weight loss surgeries and going keto. This um, There's so much to cover uh, regarding this subject because there's a lot of different challenges that we have as surgery patients that regular people that haven't had altering done uh, don't run into. So I thought, well, it's going to be a really long video because there's just so many aspects. So what I thought I would do is I'll just make a series of shorter videos and label each one. And that way um, you can just pick and choose uh, which of those topics um, you know, um, applies to your situation because they won't all apply. Uh, some people, you know, have specific issues that they're dealing with and others just are just starting and they just want to know, uh, overall if this is going to be a possibility for them as a bypass or sleeve or whatever patient. So the first thing I want to say is when you have weight loss surgery, your body is going to go through a hell of changes. So the first 8 to 12 months after weight loss surgery is kind of your honeymoon period where your body is going to adapt to uh, the new setup, your new situation. So, um, you know, and a lot of us... Uh, were put into a liquid diet or some sort of liver shrinking diet prior to having the surgery, uh, depending on your size, of course, and your, um, your doctor. Some require it, some don't. My doctor required it, so I had, I think it was four weeks of liquid diet, low-calorie liquid diet, uh, to shrink my liver. Because I carried all of my weight kind of apple in the center. So uh, he wanted to make sure that my liver wasn't going to be an issue. Um, so this first video, um, I think what we'll talk about is just getting started. So you've had bariatric surgery. You know, you've gone, you've lost, you know, maybe a big chunk of weight in the very beginning. And now you're kind of slowed down or stopped or stalled or one of those things. A lot of times you don't want to admit it to yourself. And this is the biggest thing. Uh, we slip back into comfortable eating. So what that means is it's always going to be the bad foods that are going to feel the best. So things like goldfish crackers, uh, a lot of cheese. Um, well, sometimes dairy is an issue. I know that after my bypass, I became completely lactose intolerant and could not have any kind of dairy. Uh, it really caused me a lot of pain, but some people don't. Uh, but crackers, goldfish, sliders, anything that's that they teach you beforehand will be a slider is usually the thing that feels the best. Uh, and a lot of people will use that as an excuse um, to continue eating those. Well, that's the only thing I can eat. And that can be a reason for stalling or regaining right after surgery or... Uh, you know, just stopping altogether. So, uh, getting started, if you have decided, hey, this keto thing looks like it might be something that I'd be interested in doing, you have to remember that uh, keto is very low carb, higher fat, moderate protein. So, no matter what your nutritionist, dietitian, doctor says, it will not kill you, it will not make you, um, you know, 
gain weight. It's not bad for your heart. It's not bad for your diabetes. It's not going to have any detrimental effects. Of course, if you have diabetes and you are taking meds, you always need to inform your physician before you change anything because it's not so much about what you're going to be eating as uh, how it's going to be affecting the meds. Uh, you won't need as much insulin and uh, so forth. So you really need to let your doc know whether it's an endo or just your regular GP, whoever is doing your um, meds. So if you're already uh, bariatric and you're following your plan, you're uh, more than likely eating low carb uh, or you should be. Uh, that means they push protein first. I hate those shakes. I never drank those shakes from day one. They were putrid and slimy and disgusting. No matter what anybody says, they're gross. I bought a Nutribullet, one of those little tiny ones, and anything I wanted to eat, if I felt like I wanted lunch meat, I know it sounds really disgusting. I will put it in the Nutribullet until it became basically baby food. And then I would eat that for my protein. I also would buy Wendy's Chili, which was a lifesaver in the beginning. I would buy some of that, cool it down. Don't try to do it hot. Cool it down, put it in the Nutribullet, grind it up till it's like soup, heat up a little bit of that, and eat that. Another thing in the beginning that I was eating which of course you can't do on keto is refried beans. I was eating uh, quite a bit of that with cheese, uh, which was terrible. And uh, it, it takes a long time to figure out what you can tolerate. And then you've got to step outside of your comfort zone. So after six to eight months, you're healed. You should be moving on to solids and, you know, you should be kind of experimenting. I couldn't eat eggs for the longest time. I kept trying. They hurt, they hurt, they hurt. Um, and you're going to have that. You're going to find foods that you really want to eat, but you're not ready for whatever reason. So start cutting your carbs back on a daily basis. Now, keto is about fat. So fat is what keeps us full. Now you're thinking, why am I eating all this fat if I'm trying to lose fat? Wouldn't it just be better just to let it eat it off my body and eat low fat? It doesn't work that way. Your body needs to feel full. You need to feel satiated. And that's what it is. So you're eating low carb, moderate protein, 70 grams or so. I know they tell you to pump it way up right after bypass. You don't need to keep it elevated like that. You just don't. Not unless you're a bodybuilder. 70 grams is plenty for a regular sized person. Now you do have to increase your fats. So um, you're going to eat your protein, your veg, and then you're going to start adding fats to those. Um, if you've been eating high carb, which I consider 100 or more grams a day, you're going to want to cut down on your carbs slowly. Don't try to do cold turkey. You'll throw yourself into the keto flu. You'll feel like crap. It's just not worth it. Cutting down slowly works just as well. So cutting down slowly on your carbs and slowly increasing your fat for bariatric patients the best way to go. You also, before you start bariatric or after bariatrics, I know you you kind of get obsessed with weighing yourself. Stop doing that. Stop weighing yourself every single day or twice a day or ten times a day. Weigh yourself once a week, same time of day, morning, after you pee, na butt naked. Just do it once a week. But you want to measure yourself when you start keto. Take three or four measurements, your waist, your hips, your uh, top, you know, maybe around your neck. Um, and then start measuring yourself once a week as well because you're, you're going to change in measurement faster than you're going to change in weight on keto. And that will keep you pumped up if you can see those changes. So getting started for bariatrics, a lot of the same thing 
as if you were just like a regular person. Just start cutting down really slowly on your carbs and adding a little bit of fat. And um, add the fat so that you're not hungry. That's why you're adding it. So that's how we get started. And that's going to, I'm going to stop here for this one and I will cover another subject pretty soon. Okay. See y'all later.